In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi, load a bunch of games onto it, and then we'll plug it into our arcade cabinet and get all up and running. So welcome back to the Underground Arcade. My name is Bronson and I'm on a quest to build a big arcade in the back of this rather messy shit I'm sitting in, but one day this will be my arcade. Now this is our second ever video here on the YouTube channel. If you missed the first one, I got this beautiful old arcade cabinet uh, that was gutted and we started installing the things we're gonna need to get it up and running. So we put the screen in, made a nice screen bezel. We talked about controls and buttons and all that sort of thing and put all our buttons in. And we've got it looking pretty good, but now we need to put a brain into it. Now there are loads of options when it comes to setting up emulators and running ROMs on a modern arcade cabinet. Uh, you could grab an old PC that you got sitting around and put something like MAME on it, you know, an old Windows box, um, load a bunch of ROMs onto it. You can buy pre-configured boxes like the Pandora DX and the Pandora 10, I think it is, that's come out. Um, a lot of those come pre-configured with like tens of thousands of games. Um, you can just plug and play those. I might actually buy one of those for a future video so I can sort of run through that with you guys as well. Uh, but what I picked up was a Raspberry Pi. So I bought a Raspberry Pi 4. This is the Pi 4. Uh, I know the 5 is out, but what that means is that the 4 is actually quite affordable because um, these jumped up in price a while ago. You can pick yourself up a Raspberry Pi from Amazon for around $100 uh, for the, the base board. What I actually bought was the kit. So I bought the Raspberry Pi 4 advanced edition pack. Um, so what that got me was the Pi 4 board, the standard board. Uh, it got me a case, um, this little case you see here, which is kind of cool. So the board sits in this little, you know, made to measure case. Um, it came with a power supply. Um, the cool thing about the Raspberry Pi is it just runs off USB power. And the power supply they give you actually has a little switch on it as well. So you can turn it off and on. Uh, it's got an inline power switch. So it came with that in the kit. It also came with the HDMI, so this has got the micro HDMI out. It's got two HDMI uh, out of this, so you could actually run two screens of one Raspberry Pi. So it came with the HDMI cable. It also came with a heat sink and a little fan which you clip inside the case. Uh, I'm not sure how hot these things get, um, but yeah, I thought I'd get the, the heat sink and the fan. It'll be inside the cabinet mounted on the wall so you won't ever hear the fan. It also came with an SD card, 32 gig SD card, and that comes preloaded with the Raspberry OS. So really plug and play solution. So you do pay a bit extra for the, the pack obviously with all the accessories, but if you don't have a spare SD card or maybe the power supply or whatever, the, the kit's probably a good way to go. I'll leave links to both the board and the kit down below, um, just Amazon links in the description of this video if you wanna go and check them out. So what I'm gonna do is unscrew this panel and we'll take this whole panel with the control boards and the USB cables up to my office. I'll first show you how we're going to flash um, RetroPie on here. Then we will configure the controllers. Then we'll install a few games. And once I've kind of got it running in my office, plugged into one of my work monitors, I'll then come back down and we'll install everything in the cabinet. And then we'll play some games on it, which is blooming exciting. So yeah, let's go up to my office and uh, I'll show you how we install RetroPie. Well, please excuse my rather uh, messy office. Um, so what we're going to do uh, is we're going to remove the SD card from our Raspberry Pi. And we are going to insert it into a card reader, um, plugged into another computer here, and we're going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager. And what the Imager basically allows us to do is flash the software we want onto the SD card. So when we put the SD card back in our Raspberry Pi, it'll automatically boot it. So we open up the Raspberry Pi Imager, we choose our device. So we're going to choose the Raspberry Pi 4. We choose our operating system. Now this is where we can actually just flash the Raspberry Pi OS onto uh, SD card to to boot onto here. But what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to emulation and game OS here. Now you'll see two options, RetroPie and Recall Box. I've not actually done much with Recall Box, but we're going to maybe look at that in a future video. So we're going to click on RetroPie and we've now got to choose the version. So you'll see here the top one is for Raspberry Pi 1, the second one Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and we've got a Raspberry Pi 4, so we're going to click on that one. It did say it was about a gigabyte of download, but that's fine. Now choose storage. So when we click on choose storage, we're going to see a list of all the external media plugged into this computer. So we're only seeing one thing at the moment, which is the um, 
micro SD card from my Raspberry Pi, so we're going to select that. It does pay to be careful at this step because if you had another flash drive plugged in or an external hard drive in your computer and you accidentally selected that, you'll see when I click next here, it's going to tell us that it's going to erase everything on that disk in order to flash the image of the OS we're after. So just be very careful if you've got, I don't know, something really important on a flash drive. Maybe pull all your external media out and just make sure you've got the one uh, SD card there. So all existing data is going to be erased. Are we sure we want to continue? We'll hit yes on that. And what it's basically going to do is it's going to write to the drive down the bottom there. You'll see it writing now. It's then going to verify and then when it's done it's going to eject the drive and tell us um, that it's ready to go. So it does have to download that gig. Um, so depending on your internet it might take, you know, this could take 5-10 minutes easy. Uh, obviously depending on the speed of the SD card you're using as well, if you're using an older SD card, it might be a bit slower, it might take longer to write. So we will leave this writing now and I'll see you in 10 minutes. So about 20 minutes then to write the image and as you can see it's verifying now and it's just about done finalizing and it should pop up now and say it's ejected the card. So we can go ahead and pull the card out and put that in our Raspberry Pi. We'll plug it into one of these monitors and boot it up. So what I'm going to do is plug both my keyboard and mouse into this as well as the power and the screen. Power in there, HDMI one there, and then I'm going to try and make room on my desk here to grab my big heavy controllers and I'll plug these in as well. I might just start by plugging in the left side, the player one side, and we can configure that. Actually, I might plug in both and just, just save us having to reboot it. Alright, so excuse the filming of the screen, but I can't figure out how to screen capture this on the RetroPie. Uh, but we just booted it up, so you can see there it's booting up the Linux OS, and hopefully it's going to take us into a button configuration. It's hopefully going to detect two game pads, one for player one on the left, one for player two on the right. And we will go through the motions and set it up. So all our buttons and joysticks are set up, and now we're going to transfer some ROMs onto the RetroPie. Now there's a few different ways you can do this. You can do this over uh, FTP, over Samba file shares in Windows. Um, you can also do it by plugging a USB stick into your computer and transferring the ROMs on and then have the RetroPie copy them off the stick. So essentially what you do is you come over to your computer and you plug in a blank USB stick. It does have to be FAT or FAT32 formatted. It can't be NTFS. And what we do, we create a, a folder, RetroPie, that's blank. We take the stick out and we plug it into our RetroPie when it's powered up. Now what that's going to do is write a few other things to that folder. Um, so we leave it for a few minutes, so wait till the lights finish flashing. We plug it back into our computer. And now if we go into the RetroPie folder, you can see here we've got subfolders. So we'll go into ROMs, and you can see here we have all the different folders for the different emulations. And so it's as simple as copying the files you need, um, the ROMs you've downloaded from other websites. You can see here I went a bit crazy. I didn't just get one. I got a few. Um, 1942 is, is my game of choice. 1943 as well. Um, metal slug as well. I'd love to own an original metal slug cabinet. Um, that's a quest for another day. So I downloaded a few ROMs. Um, you can download literally tens of thousands of these things and you'll often see boxes with a whole lot of ROMs installed on them. They'll say, you know, this has 3,000 ROMs or 4,000 ROMs. Um, what I'm going to do is just cherry pick a few, pick some that I know my children will like that I can play with them and sort of build a collection, because I don't just want this overwhelming collection of all these ROMs, and then I've got to spend half an hour going through all the different games on the RetroPie, just trying to find the one I want to play. So, anyway, side note. Um, so I've got six ROMs there, so we basically come into the arcade folder up here, we grab these, we copy them over, and you can see there my six ROMs are a total of 41 megabytes, so not too bad. Once that's finished copying, we're going to take the stick out, we're going to plug it into the RetroPie and that's going to copy them off the USB stick onto the SD card that is running the OS on the Raspberry Pi. I probably should point out that obviously we are limited to the space on that SD card, the micro SD card in our Raspberry Pi. So the one you get out of the box and that kit I talked about earlier is 32 gig. Um, so we should be able to hold a few ROMs on there. 
but it is something to consider. Um, you can also run the ROM straight off the um, USB sticks as well. There's a few config things you need to do. But the RetroPie website is really good at telling you all this sort of thing. So we'll plug it into the RetroPie now, and hopefully in about 10 minutes time, I'll be playing 1942. All right, time to screw the joysticks back on now. Try and juggle all of this. Um, to keep things nice and tidy, I'm gonna feed player one uh, USB cable through this side and player th two through that side. It might pay to mark them um, joystick one and two, although I, d I think the RetroPie does pick up which one's which once you go through that button configuration. So that is player two. Um, I am going to come through and do a big tidy up of this cabinet, probably in the next video as well. I want to change some of the wrap, I want to change the marquee. I realise today I don't have speakers on this thing yet, <laughs> so I need to figure that out. Um, so there'll probably be a whole other episode on just sort of tidying it up, and yeah, I want to rewrap it. I want to try and get a 1942 or 43 marquee um, artwork uh, up the top there, and just change it, because it's currently, if you would, if you saw the last video, it's a point blank or a bullet time cabinet originally, and it doesn't have the guns anymore, does it? So um, I kind of want to change that a little bit. So we will try and balance all of this here. I do probably need to find a better solution in the future as well for mounting my little controller boards here. But we will go like so. Push that up. Put those on there. Alright, so player one. Plug that. Plug player one into my pie there. Player two. I will also um, wire in a coin mech as well at some stage. I think that'll be a fun project for another day when I'm a bit more advanced in all of this. Eh? <laughs> Put those two in there. Let's hook that over that hook to keep that out of the way. It looks like this cabinet's had all sorts of shelves and stuff in the past, probably when the CRT was in there, so. Cool. HDMI into the back of my monitor here. And power. We'll go around the back here and turn on our retro pie, and with a bit of luck, with a bit of luck, <laughs> it should boot up, here we go. Hopefully see the retro pie logo, and hopefully our games have installed. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. So because we've copied six games over to the arcade folder, as well as the RetroPie setup, we should see the arcade in just a second here. And hopefully it'll say six games available. So it's quite, it's quite neat actually, because it'll just show you, as you can see, arcade six games available, yes. So as you can see, it just shows you RetroPie and the emulators you have games installed for. Um, so if we installed Nintendo DS games or Game Boy Color games or whatever, we would see the various options. So let's go into Arcade and you'll see our games there. And here we got it, 1942, 1943. I also put Metal Slug on there because who doesn't love Metal Slug? Ninja Turtles as well. Let's go play some 1942, this is exciting. Well, there you go. I'm pretty excited to have my first Arcade machine, I've been thinking about this for years, but I'm pretty excited to have it running because it's been a little bit of work, a little bit of research, obviously. But there you have it, that's uh, ROMs running on RetroPie, running on a Raspberry Pi, and an old arcade cabinet running on a, a widescreen monitor. So I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out so far. Like I said earlier as well, if you wanted to see more of how I set that bezel up for the screen and how I mounted the screen and all the buttons and the wiring and that sort of thing, then um, check out the previous video. The next video, I'm going to tidy this thing up. I'm going to 
I think like I said earlier, I want to get the marquee changed out. I want to get the marquee light working. I need to put speakers in it, obviously. I've got to figure that out. I'm not quite sure where to put those just yet, probably down the bottom. Uh, I want to basically just give this cabinet a bit of a tidy up because this is my first cabinet, my first of many, hopefully. So this will always be my baby, won't it? So we'll probably rewrap the sides. Uh, we'll tidy it up a bit. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, subscribe. See you in the next video. Like I said as well, I'm going to go and pick up a trailer load of old arcade machines, some of which are not working. So we're going to probably have a little series on this channel where I try and get arcade machines up and running and restore them a bit. Um, and then who knows where it's going to take us from there. But yeah, we'll also talk about other sort of software emulators you can run. We might look at putting MAME or Pandora box in the next machine. So yeah, there'll be plenty of interesting stuff on this channel. So thank you for coming along. Thank you for joining me in this video and I'll see you in the next one.